let's get back to the market though. We will see how the local index is tracking and we're down 23 points at the moment, 0.4 of a percent. I mentioned that we seem to be right down the lows of the session, the low being 62.44. Uh, we're sitting now at about 62.50, so about six points away from the lows of the day. And it really is, if I have a look at those sectors that seem to be, well, underperforming today, it is uh, telcos, material, discretionary. We're also just seeing a pullback for the financials. For uh, a lot of the morning, we were seeing financials doing okay. And if I have a look here, the NAB, Westpac, ANZ, all doing okay. But it is CBA that's the biggest drag among the banks today, down about 1%. Of course, that is coming ahead of its result due out tomorrow, uh, a big one across the banking space. So for a bit more on what to expect there, and of course, what's he, what he's making of, of today's market moves, Chris Conway from the Australian Stock Report joins us now live from Melbourne. Chris, great to have you with us. And maybe we can talk CBA in just a moment. But your thought on the broader session there today, giving back some of the gains that we did see yesterday. And I mentioned that we seem to be right down the lows of the session today. We still obviously have the elevated trade tensions here with China. But for the most part, it seems like the local market doesn't seem to be too concerned by the escalation in those tensions. Good afternoon, Leanne. Uh, yes, certainly I think the entire global marketplace isn't too concerned or may, perhaps isn't as concerned as they should be with the potential for a fully blown trade war. Um, it seems that over the recent history of these sort of big events, Brexit, Trump coming into power, things of that nature, uh, the market has just sort of taken it in its stride and hasn't really worried about it until it, you know, it has actually arrived or the event has actually occurred. Similar sort of thing to what we're seeing here. Even when we have seen pullbacks, they've been met with buying interest. So, yeah, look, I would agree that um, potentially not as concerned about uh, those trade wars as we otherwise might be. But uh, just pivoting to what's going on today, I think, you know, we're just giving back the gains that we saw yesterday. It was a light session yesterday in terms of volumes. We closed at four, up 31 points, and then we added another seven points in the cross, and by 4.11, we're up 38 points. I don't think we had any right being up that high. Um, I think it was a bit of a contrived move, and not surprising to see us give it back today. But all of it is discounted, all of it is removed. It's all noise when uh, we consider that uh, CBA reports tomorrow and earnings season really kicks off in earnest probably from about the 15th of this month. Can we talk then a little bit more about CBA tomorrow? Because as I mentioned, it really seems to be underperforming the other three majors today with a fall of 1%. Is that positioning? I think we're expecting um, a, a lowest annual profit um, forecast or profit growth uh, in about a decade or so. Um, not a, a lot of high hopes, I suppose, for their report tomorrow. Is this simply a case of positioning ahead of that result? I would certainly think so. Uh, the, the, you know, the asymmetry of the results is that there's downside risk. Um, that they will miss. As you say, it's this first expected profit decline or, or not growth, if you will, in nine years, I think it is. Um, just interestingly, though, CBA, the last five times out, have actually missed their uh, expected numbers. Not by a lot, and it hasn't seen the stock sell off sharply, but it's five times in a row. I would have thought tomorrow would probably make six. Um, there's been a host of problems at CBA. Obviously, the Austrac fine the impairment charge, the, the $1 billion extra capital that they need to carry because of the culture of the bank. Um, and not to mention we've got a slowing housing market, which the guys were just talking about standing out the front of the RBA. So lots of pressures on CBA, fairly low expectations. Um, and I think, yeah, it's absolutely strategic selling today, positioning ahead of that result. What are some of the other key themes, as you say, it really will begin in earnest tomorrow with CBA's result? I know that AMP is another one uh, and very fascinating, I think, um, given, you know, everything is that, that, that's come out of the, the Banking Royal Commission. So big focus on AMP as well. What are some of the other key themes that you'll be looking for as we head into the heavy part of reporting season? So I guess the overarching theme for me, Leanne, is, as a trader, and look, I must admit, I'm the most relaxed I've been going into a reporting season for quite some time, and it's because I don't have a whole lot of risk on the table. And the reason for that is because the market is, I think, a little bit stretched. Um, and, you know, some of these high-value growth stocks and even names like CSL that have run really hard, I don't think you need to run the risk of holding them into the results when you might be sitting on a 50% return. And if they miss because they are priced uh, to perfection, you could see a 20 or 30 percent fall. So um, all that aside, that is an overarching theme. Um, infrastructure is certainly something that I'll be looking at. Um, infrastructure spending in both New South Wales and Victoria and those that have uh, uh, exposure to infrastructure spending in the US. So names like Borel, um, NWH, uh, some of the service industries there, names like Bingo, which is obviously waste management. 
Um, Aussie dollar tailwind is another win, uh, another one. Obviously, a weak Aussie dollar helps names like CSL and Cochlear in that space to see if they can um, continue to beat expectations. Uh, growth stocks is another one. They really need to perform uh, this time out. Again, as I said, price to perfection. If they miss, we're likely to see uh, a lot of red on the screen. Um, all right, now let's talk um, a bit more about some of the results that we have seen today. Um, we'll move on just from, from the broader expectations, I suppose. Transurban came out with its results, um, more than doubling its annual net profit um, to $468 million. Um, um, seems to be kind of a steady, consistent performer a lot of the time. What did you make of the result from Transurban? I thought it was a fantastic set of results. Uh, here's the kicker though, you know, it's all about whether or not they meet, uh, match or fail to meet expectations. This time out, it really was a case of sort of meeting expectations. That's why we've seen the stock not move very much today, even though, as you say, profit has doubled in the last 12 months. The big story here for me though was the growth in heavy vehicles on both the roads in Melbourne and Sydney. I think it was 9% growth on trucks really using the toll road down here in Melbourne. Um, and that, I think, is a product of higher energy and higher oil prices. So, you know, you've got companies, transport companies, that ship goods around Victoria and indeed around New South Wales, and they're looking at those higher energy costs and they're trying to offset them, and they're doing that by their increase, increased willingness to pay the tolls on these toll roads. So I think it's a really interesting dynamic, and it's another theme that I think investors need to be mindful head, heading into reporting season. It's something I've touched on before, but higher input costs and whether or not companies have the ability to pass those higher input costs onto clients or whether it means they have contracting margins. And as I said, I just think it's a really interesting dynamic with Transurban. But overall, across the board, their, their numbers were very strong, growth across all their divisions um, and looking really healthy. Um, excellent. And anything else that you've been watching today? I know that Navitas among the best performers, even though we've seen a, an annual loss from the company. Um, we also had IWF posting that fall in there, their annual profits there. Um, anything else that's been on your radar today, particularly with some of those companies reporting? Not particularly, Anne. Look, the results that have dropped today haven't really moved the needle. I mean, I know there was that, I don't even follow the company. It was down 42 or 44% this morning. Yeah. It's a smaller cap company. Mm. But outside of that, it's sort of, you know, the, the results that we have seen is blended in with the broader theme of the day that it's, you know, again, I hate using this term, but a bit of a nothing session. You know, we're just giving back what we got yesterday when we probably rightly shouldn't have had it. Um, and everyone, you know, really is just waiting to see the numbers drop from CBA tomorrow morning. Excellent. Chris Conway, we will leave it there, but it's been a pleasure as always. Thank you so much for your analysis. Thanks, Leanne. Cheers. Chris Conway there from the Australian Stock Report.